All right, welcome math people. Today we're going to look at a very interesting topic uh, for those taking AP calculus. At least it's been uh, somewhat of an interesting topic in recent years, and that's limit of a composite function. So let's get right into it. Specialized in science and math, and original black men, busting thoughts that pierce your mental the fierce, ripping your saxon, vocal toe to toe, impeccable, splitting your back, son. Simple as addition and subtraction, black thought, the infinite relax one. All right, so we're talking about limits of a composite function. And this, in the last few years, has been a very interesting topic. And the reason being is because as they started to look at aspects of this problem that weren't looked at a lot, the kind of obscure aspects or obscure scenarios of this particular problem, kind of were put in the forefront a few years. It caused uh, somewhat of a storm when it was first rolled out. I think the storm has settled a little bit now, but I'm still seeing there's a lot of students that need a good amount of clarity on how to find the limit of a composite function. So I'm here to provide that clarity today. I'm gonna to go through several examples and explain how each example works. And I believe once you see all these examples, uh, you'll have a very good understanding or a better understanding of how to approach and find limits of composite functions. So uh, let's go ahead and get right to our examples. So this is my example one, and I have uh, two functions f of g, and it's written kind of small, so you might not be able to see it, but this is f here, and this is g here. And the problem is asking me to find the limit as x goes to one of f of g. And so how it works, and, and this is the typical case, this particular example uh, represents the case that most people were very familiar with all along, and that's the case where we'll find the limit of the inside function first. So I'm gonna find the limit of g as x goes to one. Uh, you can see the limit of g as x goes to one is three. And then uh, the second part is, and, and there's part to the second part that for years we kind of took for granted, you know, myself included, a condition that allows us to do the second part uh, that now uh, properly needs to be emphasized. And that condition for the second part is that uh, the outside function, which in this case f, if it is continuous at the value of the limit of the inside function, then the answer of the whole composite function is just the value of the outside function at the, at the limit of the inside function. And so as you see here, again, the limit of the inside function was three. And you can see here, uh, f is continuous at three. And so f of three would just be the answer, which in this case would be zero. Nice, right? Very easy. But the part of this that, again, was neglected for years is for me to be able to do what I just did, uh, the outside function, which in this case is f, has to be uh, continuous at this particular point. And that's, that's the thing we kind of just took for granted because, quite honestly, a lot of us didn't see examples where uh, it wasn't continuous. And that's what caused the storm uh, was people started seeing examples where it wasn't continuous, where the outside function was not continuous at the value of the limit of the inside function. So uh, my remaining examples will be cases where that occurs and let's analyze and look at how to deal with those particular cases. All right, so example two. So there's two new functions. Again, this is function f here. Uh, this is function g here. And we're finding uh, the limit as x goes to two of g of f. So in this case, f is the inside function. So the same rules applies. I'm gonna find the limit of f as x goes to two, and that limit is two. And then another thing to point out, which, won't be, uh, which you won't see until a little bit later, but if the limit of the inside function does not exist, then the limit of the whole composite function does not exist. So we can just stop there. But you know, in these first few examples, it's gonna exist. So the limit of f as x goes to two is two. And so now what I want to do is uh, I just want to find g of two, right? That's what I want to do. Now, this is the mistake that happened early on uh, several years back. Uh, people say, okay, uh, g of two is right here. Uh, g of two is zero. So the answer is zero. No, 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 sir. G is not continuous at two. And so if it's not continuous, you don't just evaluate the outside function at the limit of the inside function. It's a different ball game with a different set of rules. So let's talk about what those rules are. All right, so 
let's go back a little bit. So I find a limit of the inside function, that limit is two. And I come over to the outside function and I see that the outside function is not continuous at two. Okay, when that occurs, you look at how you arrived at the limit of the inside function. And what I mean by that, in this case, if you notice, I'm approaching two from below. The values from the left and the right, as X approaches two, uh, they're approaching uh, this Y value two from below. They're approaching from below. If that's the case, now it must happen from the left and the right. So if you find the limit of the inside function and the outside function is not continuous at that value, if the limit of the inside function approaches that limit from below, then you simply, to find the limit of the whole composite function, find the limit as X goes to that value from the left for the outside function. So again, the limit of the inside function, the limit of F as X goes to two was two. Since G, the outside function was not continuous at two and it's approaching two from below, then all I have to do is find the limit of G as X goes to two from the left. And that limit would be negative one. Now, what I don't want to do, and maybe uh, the numbers uh, weren't good for this, maybe for the first examples, these weren't the best numbers because the, the limit ended up being two. And so I went over here and, and found the limit of G as X went to two from the left. Uh, this limit that I'm doing as X goes to two from the left comes from the two from this limit not from this two. It's just a coincidence that they happen to be the same number. Uh, so it's not like in every case, uh, you're gonna find a limit of the outside function as X goes to this number from the left in a scenario like this. So the reason why we use two is because the limit of the inside function was two, not because X was going to two. All right, so I wanna make sure that's clear. And, and in retrospect, maybe we shouldn't use this problem as the first example since those, those numbers uh, being the same could be a little bit confusing, but beat it as it may, let's look at our next problem. All right, so again, we have a function f, uh, a function g, and so every time uh, the function to the left will be f and the function to the right will be g. So, so let's see what limit we're finding. We're finding the limit as x goes to two of f of g. All right, so we'll start with the inside function, the limit of g as x goes to two, uh, that limit is one. And then if we look, oh, lo and behold, uh, this function is not continuous at, at one. In fact, uh, this function is not even defined uh, at one. So uh, we go to this, look at the same thing. How did we approach the limit of the inside function? And if, if we look here, we're seeing we're coming from above, not from below, from above, from both the left and the right. And so what you're thinking, you know, it makes logical sense. If when we were coming from below, uh, we took the limit from the left, then of course, if we're approaching the limit of the inside function from above, we'll take the limit from the right. So again, the limit of the inside function as X goes to two was one. And since F, the outside function is not continuous at one, and it was approaching one from above, I'm gonna find the limit uh, from the right uh, and that value is two. All right, let's look at another example. Okay, so this, is, this example is gonna illustrate something you know I mentioned a little earlier, and so this is an example uh, demonstrating this particular scenario. And so in this particular example, we'll find the limit as x goes to negative two of g of f, and so f is the inside function, and the limit as x goes to negative two of f, ah, the limit doesn't exist. There's a jump discontinuity there. So if the limit of the inside function does not exist, then the limit of the whole composite function does not exist. Uh, there's no need to do anything further. Uh, this limit uh, does not exist. Let's look at the next example. Now the next example is actually gonna be the same uh, two graphs, same F, same G, uh, but we're gonna find a limit as X goes to negative two of F of G instead of G of F. So just forewarning of what the next example is gonna be. So again, you see exact same graphs, but we'll find a limit as X goes to negative two of F of G. So in this case, the inside function is G, and I find a limit as X goes to negative two, and that limit does exist. 
uh, that limit is negative two. And so now I see that the outside function is not continuous at negative two. So I'll go back to the limit of the inside function and see if it's approaching it from above or below from both the left and the right. And what I notice is it's approaching negative two from below from the left, but it's approaching it from above from the right. And since the left and the right aren't doing the same thing, I can't utilize the rules I've been utilizing and therefore uh, the limit does not exist. All right, so we're gonna look at uh, two last examples of what I call self-composite functions. And that is a composite function. You see here, I only have one graph, one graph F, uh, but it's still a composite function because we're finding the limit as X goes to negative one of F of F of X. So F of X, I call that a self-composite. So the inside function is F and the outside function is F. So let's, let's do the same procedure, however. So I'll first find the limit of the inside function, which is F as X goes to negative one, uh, that limit is three. And so I look at the value of the outside function, which again is F at three, it's not continuous. There's a jump discontinuity. So let me go back and look at how we got to three. We got to three from below, from both the left and the right. So therefore I'll take the limit as X goes to three from the left. And that of course is negative two. And let's look at our final example. So again, it's a self composite. You see we're finding a limit as X goes to one of F of F. So the inside function is F, the outside function is F. So let's take the limit as X goes to one of F, that limit is negative one. And then the outside function at negative one is not continuous. There's a jump discontinuity there. And so I go back to the limit of the inside function and I think you can clearly see uh, from the left and from the right, it's approaching that limit from above. And so therefore, we'll take the outside function as X goes to this number, which is negative one from the right. And that answer would be uh, three. All right, so that concludes limits of a composite function. We really hope we were able to clarify and make this issue uh, lucid. Again, when this was really first emphasized, I think three to four years ago, it was causing a significant amount of problems. Uh, we hope those problems have subsided a little bit and we hope we've done our part in subsiding the problems. Uh, we'll see you next time. Specialize in science and math, man. Original black men. Busting thoughts that pierce your mental the fierce. Ripping your section. Vocal toe to toe, impeccable. Splitting your back, son. Simple as addition and subtraction. Black thought, the infinite relaxed one.